Gotta fix that. Oh my god. We're gonna have to call pest control. We've got subscribers in the house again. I think they're coming up through the floorboards. Howdy friends, my name is Milo Rossi, and welcome to a very special video. I really gotta show you something. So I apologize if all of this is really echoey. Um, I tried to film on the lav mic, but it's making some weird buzzing noise. I'm using a shotgun mic in a big empty house instead. Maybe Jean-Franco will do something to make the echo a little bit less bad, or maybe he won't and you can just suck it up. This is a door. But this is not just any door. This is a door that quite literally leads to the future. By this point, most of you know that I'm working on phase three. For pretty much the last half a year, I've been working on something that I haven't even revealed yet. It has taken months of filming, editing, research, and has even required me to add two new members to my ever-growing team. But this is a special video beyond just this, because I never actually did a million subscriber special. So here I am doing a 1.4 million subscriber special, just like all YouTubers do. We're gonna have a little party before we open this door, goddammit, because this is my special day. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Milo Rossi, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to my 1.4 million subscriber special and the launch of Phase 3. Most YouTube success stories are all kind of the same. Some guy or gal finds a niche that they're really good at and they strike it rich. They hit their million subscriber mark. They make a whole bunch of money and they move out west. They go to California, they go to LA, and they buy a penthouse overlooking Malibu Beach. You probably know that my story is gonna be a little bit different. Is it because you think you're cool and unique? No, it's because I'm a New Englander, which means I'm a complete bastard. I don't like fun. I don't like having fun. I like to find things to complain about. This wallpaper sucks ass. So when I finally hit my YouTube stride and it was like I should probably start planning for both my future and the future of this channel, I didn't set my sights on Southern California. This rickety 150 year old Stephen King ass looking house in the middle of the fucking woods. I ain't dying soft in no Malibu Beach penthouse, goddammit. I'm gonna be an ornery old bastard on this property till the day I drop dead off the roof. This is a truly beautiful New England day. This is like this is like sunshine. My old man's a historic preservationist and an architect, and I'm a historian and a builder. So this house is literally a dream come true because it comes with all the weird ass quirks that you would expect to find in this giant pile of sticks in the middle of the forest. Let me give you a quick nickel tour and then we'll get back to the video. You used to pull carriages in here. I haven't moved that wood pile yet because there's chip bumpers in it. I call them Mr. Chips. I feed them almonds. Check that out. That is a light bulb <laughs> suspended from a zip tie. A little bit of New England engineering right there. This crack is here because the foundation has frozen and the whole house has sagged like this around the chimney. It's little details like this that give a New England house its charm and remind you that your life is in the hands of a dry stack foundation and faith. This isn't original to the house, but it is the ugliest fan I've ever seen. I just thought you needed to know about it. Gee, Milo, what's this about? Oh yeah, that's just where somebody cut the original molding of the wall off so they could put a stove here. And it's not like the molding's been there for a hundred years. We may as well just cut it off so things can be a little more convenient for me. Made a good place for my traffic light though. Well that, kiddos, is what happens when you have an old house that doesn't have any plumbing in it, so you decide to add plumbing, but you just can't be fucked. So what you do is you just run the plumbing along the kitchen ceiling and then add another ceiling a foot below it, effectively losing you a foot of the kitchen, but it doesn't matter because it means you didn't have to do that much work. Oh, it's the ghost. Hello, ghost. Mmm, that's a deep pantry right there. Mmm, kind of smells like oatmeal. I could make a whole video just listing all of the weird shit I've noticed since being in this house, but we gotta keep moving with this video. I wanna take you back, because I think that in order to truly appreciate where we are now, we need to understand how we got here. Our story begins on May 23rd, 2021. Ugh. I was 21 years old and had just finished my sophomore year of college. It was the first summer since COVID, and so uh, things were starting to return to 
some semblance of normalcy, if one could even call it that. Vaccines were out, so at least we uh, didn't have to worry about dying. And I'd managed to land myself a pretty sick summer internship in what I eventually thought was going to be my career path of environmental science. Oh, haven't seen this thing in a while. I was working doing groundwater sampling on an Air Force base, or an Air National Guard base. And it was on my way to this internship in May of 2021 that I made a pivotal decision. I decided to download TikTok. Jean Franco, if you could blur the uh, logo on this helmet. I'm not sure if the people over at Acme Environmental Services Inc. would want to be affiliated with this video. And if they do, they're not paying me enough. Does this helmet have a logo? Oh. So I wore this in my oil rig miner video. Most of the day I was spent wearing a baseball cap, but we've reached the point of the night when it is headwear shift hour while I'm, <laughs> while I'm duty. I'm like an Ikea worker or like I'm an oil rig minor. <laughs> I, I feel that while I was high as a kite. So on May 23rd, I posted my first ever video on TikTok. It was pretty much about nothing. I was kind of just figuring out how the app worked. Hello everyone, I'm Milo and I'm recording this in landscape mode. But on May 24th, I made a video that claimed that TikTok was going to be a data log for all the funny things I have ever done in my life. So consider this a data log of all the funny things I've ever done in my life. All 10 of them. And my god, if only I knew how right I was going to be. For the next few weeks, I pretty much only used TikTok as a place to post funny videos that I had already made. Hey, look, do I look like a man with a horse? I live in an apartment on a second floor. How the fuck am I gonna get a horse in here? Mostly, uh, things that I recorded on Snapchat, including this video. I look like an Ikea worker. This was because I really had no idea what I was going to be doing on TikTok. I sort of just had someone suggest that I'd be funny on it. And I was like, sure, I'll give it a shot. So it was more of you know, chicken and the egg kind of situation. What came first, Milo downloading TikTok or Milo being funny? I had a brief stint where I did uh, debunking of neo-confederate talking points, um, mostly inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers, if not my favorite YouTuber of all time, Otten Shea Films, a wonderful creator who I advise you check out if you haven't already, and one who I even had the opportunity to do a collaboration with uh, back last summer, I believe. That was a bit of a dream come true. LeBron. Ooh. It is kind of funny to look back at the Neo-Confederate Talking Points videos because A, despite the cause being very good, the videos themselves are not. And B, I don't think I had any idea that debunking things was kind of going to turn into what would give me a career. I just never would have assumed that it would have been aliens. Where the fuck are you supposed to put things like this? Wait, what do you even do with this? It's like a little too big for a shot. Maybe like a really big shot. Now this, maybe this I'm familiar with. You use this to make rice. On June 15th, I posted a video about the RMV. Welcome to the Massachusetts RMV website. What action would you like to perform today? I would like to schedule a learner's permit test. At the time, I was dealing with some bullshit around my driver's license, and so I needed a place to vent my frustration around the registry of motor vehicles. We've taken the liberty to change your appointment to give you what our facilities do best, and you're no longer gonna get a learner's permit, you're gonna get a fucking root canal. And what the fuck? I don't know why he's in the bathroom box. Everything else in here goes to the bathroom. Okay. Guess you go to the bathroom too, boss man. The reason that the uh, Registry of Motor Vehicles video was so important is because it was my very first video to surpass 10,000 views on TikTok. And I was like, wow, you know, I've made it in the world. And of course, the 3D printed Moai. Oh yeah, bath salts. I'm gonna go into town and eat someone's face. On the 18th, I made my first two videos about anthropology. The first one was on the Kelp Highway Theory, and the second one was on a comment left on Lakota Guy's video. Lakota Guy was one of my favorite creators uh, in the beginning of my days on TikTok. I don't know what happened to him. His account is gone now. He was one of the first, like, larger creators that actually gave me the time of day. It was quite validating. He was a really cool guy. Either way, the comment was one of those things, you know, those fucking airheads who are like, actually, there's no such thing as Native Americans. They were immigrants from Asia. To that I say, silence degenerate. At this point I was getting between maybe like five and 15,000 views on all my videos. Oh Jesus, these smell like mildew. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it to be personal. Here's your stinky brother. But the 22nd of June marked uh, an important turning point because I made 
my first debunking video. We have none other than the man, the myth, the Indigo Bruno. A man, myth, and legend who has blocked me on TikTok. If you don't like me harassing you, you can block me. I'll call you a bitch, but like, you can still do it. It wasn't really a debunking video for me. Anybody else? It wasn't really a debunking video, if I'm being honest. I'm gonna fucking lose it. He was more just me. Kind of making fun of him. The pine cone and the snake. These two symbols are literally found all over the world, yet many people- Today I'm gonna be talking about my favorite shape. A common symbol found in every culture of the ancient world is the cock and balls. You know, every debunker has to have a point before they start debunking where it's just cyberbullying. In my defense, the things he was saying were pretty dumb, and not to toot my own horn or anything, but I think my response was pretty funny. Or could it be that somewhere in our ancient history we were visited by aliens who taught us how to make sweet intergalactic love? The next box I find better have bookends in it, or we're gonna be backed. Damn. That's a big rock tumbler. Maybe. On July 2nd, everything changed. Okay, that's a little bit too dramatic, but it did change quite a lot. I was sitting in my truck for work, waiting on a very slow well. My job involved uh, sampling groundwater, and so in order to do that, you had to pump a whole bunch of water out of a well to allow for the water from the groundwater table to percolate in, or else you're just testing stagnant water that's been sitting in the well. Now this well had what we called a low recharge rate, which meant that you could pump water out faster than the water could uh, percolate back in. So you would have to pump the whole thing and then wait like half an hour for the well to charge back up. As I was waiting for this well, I decided to make a TikTok video. It was about the Kennewick. And so, sitting there on the side of the highway in New Hampshire, I inadvertently made my first truly successful video. Because the Kennewick Man video was the first thing that I ever made to surpass 100,000 views. Who is this man? We don't know. But the fact that we don't know is what makes him the second most interesting dead guy from Washington, next to fucking Kurt Cobain. Oh, damn, there's my slippers! Why do they look so fucked? What happened to these? I guess they have been sitting in a box for a year or so. That's probably what happened to these. I remember seeing the number tick over and thinking to myself, oh God, I'm really doing this, aren't I? No, seriously, I, I remember being very excited about that. That was a huge moment. Um, and after that, I was like, well, I'm gonna just keep doing this. Why is there like a mysterious grease stain in this box? Which one of you greased? Now, as big as that moment was for me, what came a couple days later was probably the most pivotal point in my career. I remember all day at work, I was thinking about making a video. And in my head, I was like, this one's gonna be a banger. And sure enough, on July 8th of 2021, I sat down in my hotel room and I filmed the Dragon Man video. Using these methods, archaeologists were able to determine the skull was between 140,000 years old and 310,000 years old. First or second time that I'd really sat down and gone really in depth about a topic, it was the first video that I ever made to surpass one million views. That one I remember very well. I was walking through the streets of downtown Portsmouth, New Hampshire with my best friend, none other than uh, Turkey's cameraman himself. Henry, and Peru's cameraman as well, but you haven't seen the videos from Peru yet and probably won't for a while, so relax. But we were walking around together and I remember refreshing my feed and seeing it go from, you know, 997K to 1.0M. And from that moment, I was like, oh yeah, I'm the shit. I'm kidding, it's like TikTok fame. It's not like actually anything of value to society. But I was like, okay, people are interested in what I have to say. Not counting for something, didn't it? That looks fucking crazy dangerous. Is this thing legal? Gonna just put that with the OSHA violations. Part of the success of the Dragon Man video, I do attribute to the fact that it was the first time where I really let my personality shine through while making a video because I opened with a really good line. New man just dropped. Sorry, I just really wanted to open my video that way. And it was in that moment that I learned one of the most important lessons that I ever did in making short form video, which is if you don't get someone's attention in the first fucking half second of the video, 
you fuck. Doesn't matter how interesting what you're saying is, no one's gonna stick around. So for any of you who are thinking about starting short form video of your own, here's my piece of advice to you. You ever see those videos of the like babies where they have like, you know, they got like an iPad with something going, they got like a game playing, they have like a phone, with, like a YouTube video going, and they're playing like Minecraft on one thing and like Fortnite on a computer at the same time. You gotta pretend that you're appealing to those people. Again, I don't like it. I think it's a bunch of stupid bullshit. But that's the way it is. From there, I just sort of resigned myself to my fate and just continued uh, to make more videos about things I was interested in. I talked about robust astrolopithecines and Denisovans, but on July 20th, I got my first taste of the TikTok moderation that we've all come to know and hate. I made a video about the Turkana boy, which is like a, what, two and a half million year old hominid skeleton they found uh, at the bottom of a lake somewhere in Africa. It's believed that the individual was around 13 at the time of death. This was an educational video, but that didn't matter to TikTok because the algorithm picked up on the words 13 year old and skeleton and flagged the video for minor endangerment. Now you might be thinking that makes no goddamn sense and that's because it doesn't. So I appealed it because I was like, anyone in their right mind can see that this isn't in violation of anything. And then the appeal got rejected. It is hilarious. Well, it's not hilarious, but it's funny when TikTok chooses to ban things because I have literally seen like snuff videos on TikTok with like a hundred thousand likes. So when that happened, I decided, do I have two of these? What the fuck? So when that happened, I decided uh, that it was time to branch out because if my TikTok account got banned, God forbid, I would kind of just lose all of my shit. So I uh, finally made a YouTube. When I first made my YouTube account, I uh, posted a single video on it. And it was the Turkana Boy video. It was before YouTube implemented shorts, so it was just like a 60 second YouTube video. And I called it Archaeological Morsel Episode 1, which would begin the long running trend on my channel of a starting series that I would never finish. And at that moment, my YouTube channel was born, and it would sit completely abandoned for about another six months. <laughs> Oh, I didn't bring my light over here. <laughs> While Archaeological Morsel was a series that was never finished and only existed out of the necessity spurred on by TikTok's terrible moderation, it was not the only series that I started. No. Fuck is my knife. Because in August of 2021, I started a series on TikTok called Tiny Town Talk, starting with a small town called Stewart, Nebraska. The concept of it was simple. It was, uh, I would take a small town in the US with a population of less than a thousand, and I would just tell you everything you never needed to know about it in about three minutes. It was pretty fun. It ran for eight episodes, I think. And I mean, the whole series clocked in at about six million views total. So I was pretty stoked about that. I only ended up doing eight episodes of it, um, but it's a series that I have thought about going back to because I do miss it. Now, around this time, at the end of August, I was finishing my summer internship. God damn it, these are also collage books. Okay, I guess we're going back to the art room. And so I decided to take another jab at Indigo Bruno. All in all, I made like five or six videos on his terrible content and racked up about six million views across all of them. And I even earned myself a TikTok Medal of Honor, a community guideline violation for harassment. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm gonna have to buy a new house. One of my favorite collage books. Cognitive Therapy of Personality Disorders. I've used a lot of things out of here. Oh, Playboy. By August 28th, I was back at school and I made my Humane Bunkers video, which was my first real video in the field. If you recognize the building behind me, then I'm very sorry because it means that you've been to Maine. And on the 11th of September of 2021, I hit my first major subscriber milestone or follower milestone, I guess, on TikTok, surpassing 500,000 subscribers. Oh yeah, someone sent me this in the mail when I had my PO box open. It's some kind of smut that they wrote. I'm sorry, is smut like a derogatory term for people who write <laughs> smut? Hey, no way, Saksai woman. I was literally there like five days ago. <laughs> That's crazy. Man, my turnaround time is baller, holy shit. The 500 follower milestone was big, and so I decided that I should probably celebrate it in some way. So I celebrated per fan request by dressing like a pirate. Lost 
lost race of the giants. And add that to the smut book pile. On September 18th, I posted my most viewed video of all time, which was my vampires video. It got like 16 million views. Vampires used to roam the earth, and you can't convince me otherwise. Yes, I can. Watch this. I don't think it is any longer my most viewed video of all time because YouTube shorts just rack up some absolutely astronomical numbers. So this may be old news. But either way, it was my most viewed video for a long time. Now I'm glad I had a moment of joy there because the next few months of my life sucked balls. <laughs> How? The, these books aren't even that big. At the end of September, I went through a really bad breakup. So I did what any sane young man would do when recovering from the trauma of an abusive relationship. And that is go do something incredibly stupid and dangerous without telling anyone that you're doing it. And that is what I filmed in my abandoned asbestos mine video. <laughs> in the last episode, we explored that building there as well as a crane, which you can barely see through the trees. But this morning, I am setting my sights on that cluster of buildings right there. One last view of this place before we go down there. Wow. Oh, is it the ghost? Ooh. Yeah, see, not so funny when I do it, is it? At the beginning of October, I filmed a, how many part series was it? Jesus, I don't even know. A many part series on TikTok of my exploration of an abandoned asbestos mine. All right, it's the moment we've been waiting for. I don't know where the truck is, but we have found our way in, meaning that we are in business. Here we go. <sighs> and that series is fire. I fucking love those videos. Regardless of what was going on in my life at the time, I'm so glad I did that because that shit was awesome. Uh-oh. This is a video waiting to happen. Put that over by classical civilizations. <laughs> yeah, uh, file that one under racism. Bible archeology, span woo! I'll put that with racism. That was a joke. Lighten the fuck up. Now, unfortunately, like all good running from your problems, it has to come to an end. So by the time I actually made it back to school in November, I was still dealing with uh, everything. And so I didn't make all that many videos. Oh man, I love this guy. Thank you, Ted, for teaching me the way of the future. Oh wow, I love this guy. I'm gonna file these two under base. Oh, that one is filed under racism. I'm really outing myself with this video, aren't I? He moves to a big fucking old ass house in the middle of nowhere and then puts all of his Kaczynski books up on the shelf. I know this isn't, but I mean, look at it, okay? It's kind of the same shit. Based. Now, like all good problems, you can only run from them for so long. So by the time I actually made it back to school, I was still dealing with a whole bunch of bullshit and didn't post all that many videos. But in November of 2021, I got a much needed ray of hope. <laughs> One million. On November 1st, I hit one million followers on TikTok. If that isn't a resume builder, I don't know what is. Here's Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright. I was, I was right. I was Frank Lloyd Wright even. I hate numbers. They're big, they're scary, and there's a lot of them. Three months ago, I woke up to this and couldn't quite wrap my head around it. This morning, I woke up to this and went into a temporary coma. Now, that number was great uh, because it's big and that's all that matters in the world. But I also realized uh, that it actually meant jack shit because not that this is what it's all about, but I had not made a goddamn cent off TikTok. I had racked up millions of likes, tens upon millions of views, and I had not made a goddamn cent off of it. So I was like, okay, this is <laughs> kind of fucking stupid. Why am I doing this? Speaking of a million, I don't think this is my million. Ah, it sure is. Okay, I'm gonna keep this because I, we're gonna end the video. I have an idea with this. Stick around, you will be disappointed. You will think lesser of me, but it's gonna be fucking hilarious. So when I hit a million on TikTok and was like, I'm, this actually means nothing, I decided that it was probably time to actually turn myself into something. So I decided to turn myself into a YouTuber. It's the most depressing magic trick known to man. <laughs> For my next trick, my family will disown me. I'm kidding. My parents are unbelievably supportive of what I do. I know they're watching this right now and I love you guys. I went for the funny. Oh, it's for you, honey. Oh yeah, look at that. Milo Main. 30 minutes away from where I went to school. It was great. I took my picture next to the sign there, freshman year. Check out that haircut. Pretty unfortunate, right? What a great town. First broad daylight clan rally on the East Coast. Now inadvertently, TikTok had done me a huge favor by taking down my Tricana Boy video about six months prior, because in doing that, it inspired me to make a YouTube channel to repost the video 
And uh, those six months had allowed me to not only reach the subscriber threshold that I needed for monetization, but also the view threshold that I needed. Meaning that as soon as I was ready to start posting videos, YouTube was ready to start putting money in my pocket. And as a broke-ass college student who just barely had the budget for 30 rack of Budweiser and hot dogs, I really needed it. Pretty much all I needed to do was figure out what my first YouTube video was going to be. And thankfully, I've managed to find myself the perfect target. Oh, damn, this broke. It's too bad. A few weeks before, I'd made a video on a guy by the name of Alpha Talks on TikTok who was doing some stupid mud flood bullshit or something. Thankfully, he had, thankfully, and unfortunately, he had a whole YouTube channel where he made like a 12, 15 minute video uh, about his butt flood conspiracy. So I was like, you know what? He didn't shut up in his TikTok about wanting us to watch his YouTube channel. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Over the last week, I've gone through the entirety of your Melted Buildings Theory YouTube video. And I have broken down every single point in it. it took me a lot longer than I care to admit, but it's done now. The video will premiere on my YouTube channel at five o'clock Eastern Standard Time today. And so on November 15th of 2021, I had my first live premiere on my YouTube channel, something which would go on to become status quo for every video I've released since. If you didn't know that, um, all of my videos have a live premiere. I'm there, other people are there, people are there. And I was joined at this live premiere by 226 subscribers. Before this premiere, my YouTube channel at its stagnation was at about 20,000 subscribers. And by the end of November, my YouTube channel had hit 35,000. But along with these video views, came my first taste of something very sweet. Because I got my very first paycheck from YouTube for a grand total of $7.57. It wasn't much, but it was proof that what I was doing was working. And with a fire under my ass and $7.57 in my bank account, I was ready to make things happen. Bet you think this is a twin window fan. The only other really interesting thing to happen in my first semester of senior year uh, was the ancient Rome doesn't exist bullshit. I'm sure many of you probably remember me from these days, unfortunately. There's a pretty small creator on TikTok who had some weird bullshit about thinking that ancient Rome was like made up by the Catholic Church or something. And so I was like, hey, maybe that's not true. And then uh, she called me an anti-Semite and tried to dox my family. And so I was like, okay. At the time, I was pretty fucking fired up. So I put together a whole team, you know, Stephen Bell, Aiden Mattis, myself, some other creators in the archaeology space, who were all going to try and make a video kind of debunking her points. One of the things that I sort of realized was uh, it was kind of fruitless because she wasn't there to have a discussion. She was there to argue and be right and was also... I don't know how else to say it other than I kind of realized that I was coming down on someone who was mentally unwell. That's not me trying to have like a derogatory or a punch down. I'm just like, if somebody disagrees with you and your first response is to um, accuse them of anti-Semitism for disagreeing with you and then try and release personal information about their family when you could be the same age as their mother, I think that speaks for itself. Uh, so a lot of people ask me, Milo, what the fuck ever happened to the ancient Rome video? I want to see you dunk on her. I think part of doing this job is knowing when you kind of have to uphold the high bar. Don't get me wrong, I don't do it very often, but I'm smart enough to know when uh, I am just harassing someone who does not have a lot of self-awareness. And so in an effort to not be a terrible person in that situation, we scrapped it and have abandoned the video idea. So I don't know where she is. I wish her well. I do hope that she has been able to find some sort of fucking okay, semblance of peace and sanity in the world, but it's not my problem. So that's what happens in the ancient Rome video for anyone who's been asking me that for the last year and a half. Although in a hilarious twist, when she did respond to my debunking of her point by um, doxing my family, um, <laughs> Can't believe that actually happened, that's fucking crazy. She tried to dox me as well by revealing what school I went to, but she was really bad at it. And so I, I could only assume what happened is she Google searched UMO because I had it in my Instagram bio at the time. 
and so she told everyone that I went to the University of Mount Olive in North Carolina, because I did not go there, I went to the University of Maine, Orono, and she would have known that if she scrolled back just like four videos where I made a video on campus openly saying that I went to the University of Maine, Orono. Now that would only be half the story if it wasn't for the fact that there are still like uh, several, like, wiki pages out in the world right now about me that say that I went to the University of Mount Olive in North Carolina. I've never been there. I do not know what they do, but University of Mount Olive, hit me up. Maybe you'll be my next degree. That or you owe me a, a diploma because apparently I did go there and I just wasn't paying attention. Okay, I'm done talking about that. That is literally the last time I ever want to talk about the ancient Rome conspiracy. Do not contact me about it ever again. It is a chapter of my life that I drink to forget. By the time I made it home for winter break, I decided that I was going to fully commit myself to making YouTube videos. <laughs> I guess this is, uh, this is an off-camera kind of box. <laughs> Chloe is my ass. Nice lady dog. By the time I made it home for winter break, I decided I was going to fully commit myself to making YouTube videos. Is this clothes? So, I set up a piece of green felt over my closet door in my childhood bedroom, and that became my very first studio. And it was there that I began filming my most loved series of all time. None other than Awful Archaeology. The first episode on The Old Away Man premiered on December 21st, with a live premiere audience of 354 viewers. Yes, there is clothes in here. On January 11th, I premiered my video on The Great Creekstone, which had over 2,000 concurrent viewers. And on February 6th, I released the video on the Creationist Footprints, I think, which had over 3,000 concurrent viewers. How I achieved this post schedule, I have no idea, but I've been trying to get back to it ever since. Look, living a life and all that shit is complicated, okay? There's things I have to do, like eat, sleep, and piss. It's hard to find the time to make YouTube videos with all the time spent pissing. By the time that school resumed, I was busy as all hell. Yesterday, my dad was here helping me uh, move and secure some of the, um, the, the worst places where water is leaking into the building. Uh, and he asked me, he's like, do you have any soap? And I was like, father. Everything that I own is currently in this house. But finally, at long last, after suffering through the final semester of college, I made it to the finish line. In May of 2022, I graduated college. And not a second too soon, I might add. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. No shade, University of Maine. They were a great school. Uh, but after being in school for 16 years, there's nothing that you're ready to do more than actually have a life. Like a bat out of hell, myself and my partner at the time moved down to Rhode Island, where we moved in with my best friend. Uh, and that is where I built my first studio set. I set up the blackboard in one of the blank walls there. Oh, you're gonna come and take my place. All right. Standing here, gesturing. All right, you're talking. gesturing, you're Pointing talking. to a thing that I drew here and indicating whatever I will be projecting on that board over there. And now I would have a picture on my face. Um, because at that point I knew that YouTube was gonna be my full-time job and so it was time that I start taking it seriously. And I finally had the space, energy, and resources to actually do that. Up until this point, I had been doing all of the YouTube heavy lifting on my own and I knew that I couldn't continue to do that. It just wasn't sustainable. And so, I hired the first member of my team. I'm sure all of you are well aware that I'm not the only one that does this. The only reason I am able to produce these videos and they are able to have the final polished look that they do is because I have a wonderful, supportive, and capable team behind me who help make this happen. Now, you never get to see their faces, but for this video, which is very special, I have made all of them film a little introduction. And so I'm gonna throw their asses in the limelight because I think that they deserve the recognition that they deserve. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the longest running member of my team, the backbone of my editorial process, Sean Frank. Howdy, my name is Jam, I'm 21 years old, and this thing tried to escape is my assistant editor. She's named Roma, and she likes to sit on my lap while I edit. Go. So yeah, I'm the editor. I'm normally like behind the screens and stuff, not in front of the camera. So this is kind of weird. My history with Milo starts about a year and a half ago when he made a little post that he was looking for a video editor. And me having learned how to edit at 12 years old with Camtasia Studio, but because I wanted to become a micro YouTuber, of course, I just took the opportunity. I shot my shot, and here I am. So 
I was kind of decent, I guess. The first video that I edited was the uh, Dendera Light video, which I watched recently, and it fucking sucks. So it's safe to say that I've improved a lot in the last couple of, you know, months. And it's been an amazing journey. You know, I've just gotten to meet a lot of really, really cool people wow, with this thing that is just insane. But yeah, there's no, like, secret or anything more interesting that I can say. It's just me sitting in front of these screens, chopping footage, and trying to, you know, make them look nice for you guys. So I just wanted to take the time to absolutely thank Milo from the bottom of my heart. When I joined this project, I was, well, stumbling the post-pandemic world as we were all doing, still trying to figure out my place in life and what I wanted to do. And Milo gave me a great opportunity that I just, you know, I don't think I'll ever be able to repay because this is, Amazing. This has not only been an opportunity to be part of this just amazing project, it's also shown me that there is something that I actually love doing and that who knows, maybe I will hopefully be able to turn it into a lifelong career. But I will not stop rambling because I'm not as good as stopping as Milo is. That's why he is in front of the camera. That's an amazing skill and he just pulls it off just flawlessly. Be good back to the people. Bye bye. Over the course of the summer, I worked on creating more episodes of Awful Archaeology, as well as launching a new series called Lost Lineage. I also made a uh, second channel primarily for unboxing videos, uh, which is about to get a very big overhaul in Phase 3. I'll be talking about that shortly, I swear. We're getting to the end of this. But around the end of the summer of 2022, I received an email from somebody who was offering me uh, graphic design and visual help, and I was like, well, that's interesting. And one thing led to another, and that's how I met the second member of my team. None other than my design and visual specialist, Melina. All right, Melina, get out there. Show them what you got. Hi, my name is Milena Morani, also known as To Be Honest. I am a visual artist, and a while back, I was eating fries with nuggets when I saw a video of Milo's and said, I want to work with this guy. So I reached out to him, and luckily, he was just looking for someone to do merch. And merch we did. Later on, I started doing thumbnails, sometimes visual branding, other times maybe a little bit of editing, but pretty much anything that added a little bit of visual sparkle, animations, you name it. I also talk a lot during meetings, and I am sorry for that, but I love talking. Right now, I am a certified visual artist, and I do fine art in galleries, I work with local and national theater. Also, most of my time is spent working with Milo, and I love it. I love the team, I love everyone, and I am really proud of how far we've grown. Oh yeah, and I have a YouTube channel. Milo said I can plug it in. I hope he did. You can check it out if you want to. Is this everything? Did I forget to mention something? On August 16th, I received a email said, interested in writing a book. And I was like, okay, this is just getting out of control now. And that was how the Encyclopedia of the Weird and Wonderful was born. Born from the fires of Gmail. When I started writing the Encyclopedia of the Weird and Wonderful, my life was taking a really big shift. I was moving out of Pawtucket. My partner and I had broken up. I was pouring all of my time into writing this book and my video production <laughs> dropped. But necessity breeds innovation. And it is over the course of four months that I wrote uh, the Encyclopedia of the Weird and Wonderful as, as it appears before you today. How I managed that, I could not tell you. I finished the Encyclopedia of the Weird and Wonderful in December. And now after that, I knew that this move was eventually gonna happen. And I knew that my lease was gonna be up soon and that I didn't know when I was gonna have my next studio. So I knew I had to make one last series and make it count because I was about to not have a place to film anymore. And so in the spring of 2023, I scripted and filmed I watched Ancient Apocalypse so you don't have to. It did come at an immense emotional cost. I filmed the entire thing in the course of two days, which is why I drank like a fish. The first episode drew a crazy viewership, but it ended with a mistake. And as if some god was smiling upon me, I received an email almost immediately after that video went up from an archaeology student who I had advised on his thesis project about pseudo-archaeology uh, a few months before. And he was asking, if I needed a research assistant. And I was like, brother, do I? Because if I was gonna be making videos, uh, then there was gonna be millions of people watching them. I needed to make sure that I wasn't touting the same bullshit as the people I was trying to debunk. And that is how I met the third member of my team. Ladies and gentlemen, my research assistant, Sahar. Hey there, my name is Sahar Stiglitz and I'm the researcher for Milo's channel. My educational background is digital media and communications, but my passion has always been ancient history, 
uh, mythology, archaeology, ancient cultures. I just love these things so much. I first got connected with Milo back in 2022. I was living in the Netherlands, working on my master's thesis uh, about the uh, YouTube recommendation algorithm in the context of pseudoscience and pseudo-history. I wanted to reach out to Milo to interview him uh, as an up-and-coming science educator and conspiracy theory debunker. He was so cool, so forthcoming. We had an amazing chat. Uh, everything turned out great. And so several months after, I realized that the channel was getting quite big and so I reached out to Milo again hoping that we could work together and luckily enough he was interested and here we are almost a year on. We've worked on some really cool projects like the Ancient Apocalypse series, the Turkey series, Peru and now our most up-and-coming project. Working with Milo and the rest of the team has been a phenomenal experience. There's just so much genuine passion uh, and excitement for what we do as a team, as a channel, and we're so excited to just continue bringing you guys this type of content that is well-researched and academically verified so that we can all continue enjoying the uh, many lessons and stories that ancient history and archaeology have to offer us. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you. All right, we're wrapping this up now. I'm ready to open that door. Now, by April, I was filming in Turkey, and I needed a cameraman in order to do that. And so, I ended up going with none other than my incredibly talented childhood best friend, Henry. All right, Henry, take it away. I know how much you'd love to be in front of the camera. Hey, everyone. My name's Henry Sieber, and I'm the official cameraman, drone guy, and tech expert for Milo Rossi and his team. I've actually been working with him uh, for about 21 years at this point, uh, if you can call us two before kindergarten working, but we've been best friends for most of that time and filming videos for almost all of it as well. We've started about four or five YouTube channels at this point, doing Minecraft, doing spin art, doing slow-mo videos of Nerf guns and balloons, you name it. So it's really cool to be able to work on this channel with him as well. We first, I guess, technically went into business together. Um, in 2018, we got this drone, and then 2020, we started a company together, uh, Drone Drifters Photography. Didn't go very far, no surprise you haven't heard of it. I guess my first official contribution to the Mini Man, Man channel, other than coming up with the name, would be the turkey trip that uh, we both got to go on this past spring. So I was the cameraman for all of those videos, as well as the Peru videos, which haven't come out yet, but uh, we just got back a month ago from that. My main focus over the past five years or so has been uh, drone photography and videography, but I've been um, circling back around to digital and film photography as well lately, and obviously I love filming uh, Milo's videos as well. I'm so incredibly proud of Milo and everything that he's been able to accomplish, um, but this has been his passion for his whole life, so it, it makes complete sense to me watching him grow up that this is where he's ended up so far, and I can't wait to see where he goes from here. I can't believe that he wrote a book, that he's at 1.0 subscribers, and that he's still going. I am so glad and grateful that I've been able to be along with him for this whole journey, and I, I can't wait to see where else it takes us. So thank you for everything, um, both to Milo and to his team, and to all of you. You're really what's what's made this possible, and you really have no idea how much this means to Milo. It's It's truly amazing. Along with Henry, I also had a new addition from the Turkey series, someone who originally was helping me with a short form video and has now morphed into a bit more of a um, assistant editorial role. A suggestion from my wonderful editor Gianfranco, none other than Luca. Hello guys, my name is Luca, I'm 21 years old, I'm Gianfranco's friend. I started working with Milo a few months ago. Uh, when he was doing the Turkey series. I started as a video editor for the short form content. Lately I've transitioned to being a secondary editor or assistant editor, however you want to call it. I am extremely grateful for the opportunity that Milo gave me. I love this show. Uh, we have an amazing team of people from all around the world. So thank you everyone in the team. Thank you Milo. Thank you all of you, the viewers. This has been a great journey. So, hope to see you guys next time. Bye guys. Now this brings us almost all the way to the present. Turkey is really the last series that you guys have seen, but that was months ago. As it stands right now, it's November. So for the last seven months, you have no idea what I've been up to. Over the course of the whole summer, I have been working on a gigantic project. A project that required months of planning and more than a month of non-stop shooting. Now I'm about to go to the door and we'll announce this thing. I need to introduce you to one more person. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce that for this series, 
I have had a new member join the ranks of my incredibly talented and capable team. Someone who fills a niche that all of us have a little bit of a hard time getting good at. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give the floor and a warm welcome to our animator, Tail. Take it away. Congrats on over subscribers, Milo. Hi, my name is Kale. I am the newest member, but still probably the oldest member of Milo's team. This is what I've been working on and looking at the past few months. It's been a lot of fun. I've been primarily using After Effects to animate most of these scenes. Everything has started with a sketch, not even that fancy. Then I go and make a, a design for it. Then I add stuff and I try to make it look cool, tell a story. Some of the shots I did, I decided to cut myself and they're not even going to be seen by you. Except for here. So about me, I'm an animator, I'm an artist, where art mixes with technology to tell a story and inform people is like what I really, really care about. And just after COVID, my dad got brain cancer and died and that was really hard for me to deal with. So I've been reevaluating my life, what I want to do, what I want to prioritize. And right now, like I want to take what I know and instead of making a corporation money, I want to help like teach the world. That's what I want to do. Teach the world, use my powers for good. How many times do you actually click your mouse in your life? A couple million? 10 million or so? I might only have like 2 million clicks left. I want to make them worthwhile. But when I see people who care about what they're talking about, like Milo does, I get I get inspired myself and I want to either work with them or work toward that goal. It, it reminds me of when I graduated college. You know, the world is your oyster and I've kind of lost sight of that. So I want to get, get back on that, work with some people who are hungry to learn and make cool stuff and help teach people. I thought it was awesome that Milo wrote a book. I mean, that's crazy. He just got out of diapers. So I think it's really important to support creators that you find that like inspire you and are putting out the information, the content, the, the vibe and the feeling that you agree with. And that's one thing I really appreciate about Milo and their whole team that they've, they've been cranking on this for years and it looks great and I can't wait to see what I make with them to show you. This is Charlie. He's my dog. You want to play Charlie? Ready? <laughs> I do go outside. But I'm really, really proud of the work we've done so far and I'm excited to see what everybody thinks about it. Enjoy. Well, there you have it. Two years of absolute whirlwind growth that I never could have foreseen coming. And this is an important point for me, because up until right now, almost everything I've been doing for the past year has been something that somebody has asked me to. I did the book because somebody reached out to me. I did Turkey because I was contacted about it. I went to Peru because of the networking that I did on Turkey. Now, I'm not acting like I'm taking any of those things for granted or that I'm not grateful for them. Each one of them has been an incredible opportunity and something I'm grateful for. But right now is the moment I've been looking forward to the most because I am done with everything that everybody has asked me to do. But now it's time for me to just focus on what I want to do. 100% focus back into doing the things I love and developing the channel and the community that we have built here. That was my 1.4 million subscriber special. But this is phase three. There's a reason why for the last God knows how many minutes, I have been talking about all of the stories that it took to get me here. And that's because many people have asked, what is phase three? What was phase one? What was phase two? In my mind, I was kind of viewing it as phase one was early TikTok days where I didn't really know what I was doing. And then phase two was when I sort of transitioned to YouTube up until, you know, about April when I stopped, you know, filming things that you guys have seen. But phase three, in my eyes, is the culmination of all of it. It's taking everything that I have done and finally making something that is driven and motivated purely by myself, where I have the means to do it, where I have the space to do it, where I have the time and the focus in order to do it. And so that is why I found it so imperative to start this video by telling you the stories that it took to get me right here, because this is the turning of a chapter. And I know this honestly probably means less to you than it does to me, so you're going to have to humor my, 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 my grandiose speech that I'm giving here on the staircase. This is where the chapter turns and I am able to actually dedicate myself fully and wholly to what I'd love to do. With that being said, welcome 
to face him. Now, phase three consists of many parts, but the first thing we have to talk about is this. Welcome to my new studio. Okay, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Milo, this place is falling over, but do you have any idea how much potential this place has? Check out this fucking fireplace, dude. Look at this thing. This is the backdrop for phase three. Finally, after years of searching, I have a place that I can truly turn into whatever I want. Blackboard on the wall, a desk over there, bookshelves. I can have a bar in here. I can make this into to a big set in order to finally do podcasts in. This space can be turned into everything I need to allow my creativity to flow into this channel. Now, the elephant in the room is obviously the fact that uh, it really hasn't been taken care of in the last 80 years. So yeah, it comes with a little bit of work, but you know what? Everything that's worth doing comes with work. If I didn't want to have to work, I would have put some fucking lotion on and moved to Malibu. But you know what? I didn't. I'm okay with getting a splinter and maybe a tetanus here and there because it's worth it. Now, to give a little, just a quick history about what this room is, this house was owned long ago uh, by someone who did fairly well for themselves, if you can tell by this fucking ridiculous fireplace. This room, they called it the ballroom, but it wasn't. This entire room uh, was a library. When the previous owners were cleaning the place out, they found documents in it that they couldn't understand. Like, what the fuck is this? They brought it to an expert and they found a whole box of documents written in Cherokee. The whole thing was worth like $60,000 or something like that. I'm fucking livid that I didn't end up finding it. I wouldn't have sold it. I would have put each one in frames. The whole place would be goddamn wallpapered and that shit is awesome. I am very looking forward to breathing life back into this place again. I already have a million visions. I don't know what's gonna happen, but this has a vaulted roof. I wanna take all of this shit down, expose the beams, make it like a nice big peach thing. We're gonna obviously redo all the woodwork. All the trim along these windows is bird's eye maple, which if anyone who knows anything about wood, and I know I sure do, that shit's hard to come by. It's gonna take a long time before this place is uh, fully operational, obviously, but I think that that's part of the beauty of it because I already have my first backdrop. Now, it's gonna take me a minute to get the blackboard put up, not to mention the fact that this whole thing was an addition where the entire thing was made with two by fours, so it's gonna need a little bit of structural integrity before we hang two 80 pound pieces of slate on the wall when the whole thing's already leaned like this. It needs work, is what I'm saying. For the rest of phase three, I have a couple studio sections that I need to film, sort of like the voiceovers I did in Turkey, and I think that this is where I'm gonna be doing them. Obviously, it'll make the lighting better than it is right now. You're getting two windows with harsh white light going into the lens. I'll work on it. But there's also another objectively funnier set uh, behind you, <laughs> which is this wall, which is so heavily deteriorated that there's just fucking all the wood slats sticking out. Maybe I'll stand in front of this wall when I'm talking about something like really heavy. Oh, there's a window. There's two windows. Also, this room uh, is completely unheated. Uh, filming here in a Vermont winter is gonna be hilarious. I will probably be filming every video this winter wearing like a parka and you'll be able to see my breath. <laughs> so, look, I'm about character, okay? Like, name another YouTuber has this much fun. The beautiful thing is that it's completely blank. Anything in here can be changed. And so, if you have something that you want to see in this studio space that you think would add richness or, you know, some sort of element to my videos that you want to see, a backdrop, a set, uh, you know, some other sort of studio space. I know I said this earlier, but I've had a lot of people request that I do a podcast, so I know I want to have, like, a good microphone set up, a nice sitting set up. I cannot believe I'll be doing a fucking podcast that actually makes me want to put a bullet in my head, but I, I will do my best to not turn into Andrew Tate. Although, I gotta say, can you not just Envision it right now, see me sitting in front of this fireplace and then just saying something viciously misogynistic. Okay, 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 okay. So now you've seen the fun part. Well, this is one of the fun parts, the big room. But now, let's keep rolling with phase three. What's next? You know that uh, beautiful door that I was, you know, edging you with earlier? Well, that door is behind this bum ass door with the two by fours and the fire glass insulation stuffed in it. Honestly, I do kind of understand why they did it because this is an unheated room and that door has the R value of a piece of tissue paper. So I'm sure that this was just a giant cold sink going into the already drafty house. That being said, holy shit, that is terrible. My team and I have been kind of monitoring what you guys have thought of series in the past, more recent series, what things resonate with you, what things don't. 
And so what I really want to do is bring back some of the things that you guys really love, because thank God, a lot of the things that you guys really love are things I really love. And I'm sure many of you could see this coming about 30 miles away, but Awful Archaeology is coming back. I have already started putting together what my season two of Awful Archaeology is going to be. Um, I don't really have a timeline. One thing I have learned about this job is that by saying a timeline, I almost guarantee that it is going to be wrong, uh, which is why it's taken me so long to announce what the big creme de la creme of this video is, because I wanted to make sure I could actually release it when I said I was going to. <laughs> now, one that I'm sort of unsure as to what the audience opinion is on it um, is Lost Lineage. It did quite well, but I think it was also overshadowed by both Awful Archaeology and by the Ancient Apocalypse series. I don't currently have the direct plans to bring back, but it is one that I really enjoyed doing, and if you guys liked it, I would love to bring it back. Oh, it's time! Time to announce it. Okay, that's it. No. <laughs> I get it, here we go. I have been filming for as long as I could hold a camera in my hand. Growing up, the classic, we're gonna film a movie when I was in, you know, fourth grade, and you know, you get maybe four shots down before everyone gets distracted. Or, you know, a music video, or, you know, filming something with all of your childhood Legos. But there's one other thing that I have always done that you've also seen a few bits and pieces of on this channel. I have been an adventurer for my entire life. I've talked before about getting my start in archaeology, digging around in the shale piles of northeastern Pennsylvania where my dad grew up. From there, I would take every adventure that I possibly could. One of my most favorite parts of it was introduced to me by my father when I was about 12 years old, and that is motorcycling. When I was 12, we did our first motorcycle trip. It was a week in the spring through New England. I was cold as hell, sitting on the back of his bike, but it was a blast. I filmed the entire thing with my little yellow video camera sitting on the back of the bike and a helmet that maybe looked like a bobblehead. When I was 13, we did our first big trip. 30 days. We shipped the bike to Denver, Colorado. We did a 10-day loop through Colorado and then rode all the way back to Boston. With the whole trip planned around dirt and secondary roads using a map that I had made charting out ghost towns. This trip was a hugely transformative experience for me, and a real bonding experience for my dad and I who were able to really come together over our shared love of camping and exploration, and what was soon to become our shared love of motorcycling. We did rides in the Pacific Northwest. We finally completed our cross-country circuit starting in Denver and ending in Seattle. And with each one of those trips, it crept closer to the inevitability of me ending up following the same path that he did. And sure enough, by the time I was 18, I had my own motorcycle license. I got my hands on the, what was it, a Suzuki GS300L that <laughs> didn't run for shit. I transitioned into college, which is when I was lent, God bless his soul, by my father, uh, his Suzuki DR650, which I almost immediately fell in love with. The moment that I could have that bike up at the University of Maine, I did. I would ride it down the dirt and logging roads day after day after day. And over COVID, I did my very first solo trip. Camping every night, I did 2,000 miles from Boston up into Northern Maine and all the way back down. But it was something that I always craved more of. College happened, life gets in the way, and one thing leads to another. I end up finding TikTok, I end up finding YouTube, and here I am, the same person that I've always been, except now I have a camera pointed at me and a whole lot of people looking at me right now. But I'm still the same guy that I was before the camera. That really hasn't changed all that much. If I was trying to put on a show, I wouldn't have bought a wall with all these fucking holes in it. And so that love for adventure and that love for motorcycling has always existed. Which is why this summer I decided it was time to undertake a project that is truly a reflection of me. Not a project that somebody else asked me to do, but something that I wanted to do because I wanted to do it. And so starting in about December of 2022, I started planning for a big trip. Slowly but surely over the course of the winter, I built a map just like I did when I was 13, but this time it was different for a couple reasons. A, it was digital instead of me literally putting push pins in a AAA map, and B, it was much more than ghost towns. Yes, there were many, many ghost towns on it, but it consisted of indigenous ruins, fossil beds, and geologic sites. Places of interest that most people would blast by on their cross-country trips. And locations that are so far off the beaten trail that it would be almost impossible for them to be reached by anybody. And my goal, as you have already guessed, was to create the perfect motorcycle trip. Not only one that I would turn into a series to share on YouTube, but one that was more importantly a rite of passage for myself. 
After all, I had just graduated college. I had just finished the largest commitment of my entire life and was finally being thrown to the wind. Most people end up going directly into the workforce or into grad school or something, anything to keep them occupied. And we deprive ourselves of part of the human experience that has been so important for everyone that has walked the earth before us. And that is a rite of passage. And I always felt like I needed that, something to really shake myself. This May, I started packing the Suzuki DR650. I loaded it with camping equipment and camera equipment and was prepared for a journey. More than just a road trip, something that would be truly transformative. And that is exactly what I did. Because over the course of this summer, I have been working on filming one long series. Every site that I stopped at, I worked to film a full-length video for this channel, but not just a video about a place where I stand there and point at things, a video centered on deep history. It's not enough to know that there was a lumber mill here. One needs to know where that lumber was going, what the industry was it was supplying, and why there's forest here and not where the buildings are being made. And in order to understand these stories, we need to know so much more than just standing next to a wall and telling you when it was built. You need to understand geologic processes, natural processes, and thousands upon thousands of years of human history. And so over the course of this summer, I filmed that entire documentary series, one that aims to be supplemented by me standing here in the new studio and giving important context in different places. Now that was my original thought for this trip. I realized something else, is that this is such a transformative experience for me personally, that I wanna document it. And so I also recorded the entire trip. I recorded more than a month of my experience living by myself off the back of a motorcycle. Dirt roads every day, sleeping under the stars with nothing but myself and a tent to keep me safe from the elements. Through deserts and forests and riverbanks and lava beds, I was pushed to the limit almost every day. And I can truly say now, several months later, that it was one of the most transformative and magical experiences of my life. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is these two series that are going to be the major headliner of phase three. One focusing on a deep history of the North American continent, and the other a more personal log of a massively transformative experience, all coming together to create the series that we have named Dark Roots. I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seat, or at least I hope you are, because I've been working on this for a long time. <laughs> if you're watching this video live, hi, welcome, thank you for sticking around this long. Dark Roots begins immediately after this video ends. The first trailer will drop immediately after the video ends. At the time of me filming this, I still need to actually film my studio section, so we need a little bit of lag time, give me a second. The deep history videos will be posted here on the main channel, and the travel documentation videos will be posted on my second channel. See, I told you I was gonna be reviving it. Link to that is in the description. I just wanna take a second here to thank all of you so much. I filmed my million subscriber video back in August, and I was like, this just isn't it. This is so, like, I stood in front of a lake and did it. And I was like, this just isn't it. I have to wait. I have to wait until it's time, and it's time. I'm humbled humbled and honored to have this opportunity. When I was in Peru, we did the traditional medicine retreat. Um, I didn't end up doing a video on it, I was planning on it, um, but I figured it was personal enough that I just wanted to experience it. But the biggest thing that I walked away from, from both the Huachuma and the Ayahuasca, um, was gratitude. Realizing how humbled I am to have this. I know I joked earlier about, you know, <laughs> Malibu Beach penthouse, but I don't mean that to yuck somebody else's yum. I mean it in the sense that this, this truly is what makes me happy. And this really is everything I have always wanted. I can confidently say that I have the best job in the world and it wouldn't be possible without you guys. And I want you to know that this is more than just, I always watched the million subscriber videos growing up. I never dreamed I'd be a fucking YouTuber. I never thought I was gonna do this. And I remember I'd always look at them and be like, oh, there we go again. He's saying, thank you for everything. But I truly mean that this has been the greatest opportunity I have ever been given. And this is why I, you know, made the investment to buy a home that has a studio in it. Because even if it's falling down and it needs a lot of work, we all need a lot of work, you know? And it's worth putting in the work because I have faith in this. I have faith in what I'm doing. I have faith in this audience. I love this job and I don't see that changing anytime soon. You know, I know every YouTuber comes and goes and someday it will be my day too, but I'm hoping to diversify enough that 
I'll still have something to write by the time that happens. Well, that's all a lot of sentimental bullshit, isn't it? So that's enough being serious. I suppose that kind of brings us to the end of the video, which means that we have one more thing that we gotta do. That is a shiny thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. It has truly been an honor to have you join me on this experience and to see me forward into the next chapter of my life. I truly do mean when I say that I am over the moon about everything that we have in store for us. It is amazing to finally be able to share all that I've been working on with you and I hope that you are even half as excited as I am. And if you're watching this during a live premiere, I'll be seeing you in just a couple minutes at the official debut of Dark Roots. Ladies and gentlemen, remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and most importantly, welcome to phase three.